Um, I would like to talk today about the investigation of three-dimensional flow separation patterns and their influence of a surface pressure gradient um, on notchback beaker. I would like to take the chance to, um, to thank my supervisors and co-authors who are uh, Leonard Löfdal and Lars Larsson from Sharmus University and Alexander Bronievich from the Volvo Cars Corporation. The motivation for this project was um, to get a better understanding of the physical phenomena behind the separation effects. And in particular, the question was how can we describe the separation and characterize it? And what is the influence of an acting pressure gradient onto the observed flow pattern? Um, in mathematics, there is a theory which exists which is called topological theory. And it's a theory which is used to describe continuous vector fields by means of singular or also called critical points, uh, which are some kind of characteristic features of such um, continuous vector fields. Looking onto a flow field uh, like we have, this flow field is such a continuous vector field, which can be described therefore with these singular points. And um, investigating limiting streamlines, which are those streamlines which are very, very close to the surface, we can visualize the flow pattern and characterize it with the critical points. We can find uh, three different types of critical points. They are um, divided into nodes, which are points where either all streamlines emanate or meet in that point. We can have fine focus, which are kind of swirl swirling structures. And we have subtle points where two streamlines meet and two streamlines leave um, from that point. Um, the mathematicians um, also provide us um, rules for these uh, continuous vector fields, which can be applied. And the two most important ones are those for isolated bodies, for example, just a cylinder or a wing section in a wind tunnel, where we should find in the surface um, pattern the same amount of nodes and saddles. And uh, there's also a rule for a three-dimensional body connected to a wall. That means just, for example, a wind section mounted on the ground, where we should find the same amount of saddles and no points. And for an isolated body, um, two more nodes than saddles. I will show that a little bit later uh, as on an example how that can be applied. Looking into the literature, um, three, times of, uh, th three types of separation are reported. The first one um, called type one separation, sometimes also bubble separation, is a separation um, type where which starts from a saddle point and goes into a separation line. The second one, which is also sometimes called a horn separation, leaves the surface from a focus a structure, from a swirling structure. And the third one is often referred to as cross flow separation. And then contrary to the other two types, it doesn't have any, doesn't have any as, um, characteristic points in the flow pattern, but is characterized by a convergence of the streamlines, which, is, which are then leaving the surface as a vortex sheet. For the um, investigation we did, we did some experiments in the Volcar's wind tunnel using paint and tufts to visualize the flow. We also did some pressure measurements um, which were um, time averaged on the surface and we chose a region behind the antenna and a region on the rear screen. And we also um, used results from a CFD simulation to visualize some more uh, features which could not be resolved that good in the experiment. Um, these two pictures show um, the calculated and uh, the measured pressure, pr pressure distribution on uh, a 60 passenger car. And uh, what has to be said is that for the pressure measurements, I measured on the rear screen, I measured only at one half of the rear screen. The same for the antenna. Here you can see the black dots which mark the position of the pressure holes and then I mirrored the distribution just uh, for visualization purpose. Um, we can see that in both methods uh, we can capture the main features, um, in particular the uh, high pressure spots on the, rear, uh, on the lower edge of the rear screen and also behind the antenna where we have these um, low pressure legs I call them with the high pressure spot in the middle. The start 
for this investigation, or the first step was to look onto the uh, flow pattern of an upper uh, of, an, of the upper part of an of the vehicle, and to look yeah what what can we see, which structures occur, and uh, we see that there, for example, on the front screen we can find a classical node point on the stagnation point that we have a converging streamlines, for example, um, behind the wheel arc, that there are some interesting, more complex structures occurring at the rear screen, and um, the region behind the antenna, which I would like um, to discuss a little bit more in detail, where we have the uh, convergence of the streamlines and also some interesting features on the antenna itself. So, looking onto the antenna, this is the nose of this shark fin geometry. Um, we can find here a node point, and we can find here a saddle point. So the flowing is coming th that way, and then it's moving to left to the right. Yeah, and this is a we can see a node and the saddle point. Then moving um, to the back side of the antenna, um, we have these two outstanding vertical structures, which um, seem to be typical horn separation type, where we um, also can find here a node, a node point here, where the flow is then moving away, and a saddle point, which is very, very close to the edge. Um, looking to the corners of this antenna region, further small features uh, can be identified, and I mentioned a few slides before the topological rule for a three-dimensional body connected to a wall. And that's actually uh, that what I applied here, as this shark fin geometry can be seen as a um, three-dimensional body which is connected to the roof of the car. And when we count the nodes on the saddle, then we find that we have exactly eight nodes and eight saddles, what corresponds to the rule which is given by the theory. And therefore, we could prove that that works and that we could um, that this method which was used here uh, could capture the physics pretty well. Look, uh, moving a little bit more backwards on the rear screen, we see on the lower picture um, the result from what we measured in the, or what we saw in the wind tunnel by using paint for flow visualization purpose. And we see, comparing to the C of D, that um, we can capture in both cases um, interesting features which occur in both cases. So for example, in number one, where we see this convergence of the streamlines coming from the antenna, we see in number two kind of converging streamlines over the pillar, which meet at the edge where the window is then connected. And we have these two bubbles um, on the lower part uh, close to the trunk. And then in experiments we could see really nicely um, that these bubbles are very uh, instationary, they're moving all the time and um, the paint even didn't dry really perfectly until the end of the test. Um, as we are, have a steady state simulation for the numerics here, uh, we can get uh, in the numerical simulation pretty defined or clear structures, but we can't get them in the experiment. Looking onto this region um, together with the um, pressure distribution, we see um, that we have here our streamlines in the, um, hitting this um, high pressure spot here, here, and here. And when we look a little bit closer to that region, zoom a little bit more in, we find that the streamline coming here, moving to the left and to the right, that there is a saddle point um, which can be found. And this saddle point can be also found for the other three spots. And that shows us how, this, uh, how the flow is kind of pushed away from this point into the region with a lower pressure. So um, the, the high pressure pushes out the flow into the low pressure regions. And here in between these two spots, flow f with different directions is meeting. And they have to kind of arrange uh, them and to balance out their directions. And that's why we have these um, yeah, pretty complicated focus structures which occur. But what happens with the streamlines on their way to the surface? And here this is a picture where I plotted uh, the streamlines 50 millimeters above the surface and we see that the streamlines are well aligned with the main flow and straight. 
And when we look on to the streamline a pattern on the surface, we saw that we have these merging streamlines here. I try to visualize a little bit better with the red lines. And we find that these convergence of the streamline exactly matches with the location of the pressure minimum in the pressure distribution. And how, how does that happen or how does, does that work? That can be explained by looking at the uh, radial pressure equation where, which says that when we have a streamline <coughs> and an acting pressure gradient from a lower to higher pressure, then the streamline is bent down towards the low, lower pressure or in other words, the streamline is sucked into the low pressure region. And that's exactly what happens here on the upper right picture, that we have this pressure minimum and the streamlines are sucked into that minimum. Additionally, in that case, very close to the first surface, our flow has very, very low momentum. So therefore, um, the streamlines react very, very strong and very fast to um, acting pressure gradients. Yeah, there was, I would like to, um, come to some conclusions or summary what I talked about. Um, I wanted to show that uh, topological theory and the critical points can be a good language to describe the limiting streamline pattern on vehicles. Um, I showed how the application of a topological rule was used and um, I wanted to describe what the influence of a pressure gradient, what the pressure gradient has what influence the pressure gradient has on the limiting streamline pattern um, of the car, especially close to the surface. So there is, I would like to thank you for your attention. Um, questions are really welcome. <laughs>